Hello and welcome again to this particular session. As usual, lots of requests were being made of late, especially with respect to question number 5 of December 2022 paper. Correct. So in this series, now we'll pick up this particular question, but needless to add, lots of mistakes are again there. So that is the only problem we are facing and of obviously you too. <clears throat> but good thing is that in this paper, there was choice for you. You could have skipped this particular question, not only this one, but also the cash flow statement question, which again, in my opinion, actually have some sort of misprints or something like that. Anyway, we on our part will try level best effort to see to it that you get the best possible analytical analysis of this particular question. Anyway, so if you are ready, one more request is that please uh, keep with yourself the question paper because time and again it will be difficult for me to reflect the question to you. Correct, so given below are the extracts of the balance sheet of S limited and S limited. And in this question, as usual, first of all, we have been given equity share capital of H limited, which happens to be holding company. And question instead of being asked from India 110 has been asked from AS21. That looks pretty, pretty surprising. And that is the only problem which we are facing. And in this question, general reserve, then 8,40,500 is the balance of general reserve of S limited at the end. You need to note down the balance sheet date very carefully. That is 31st of 3, 2022. Whenever we solve the consolidated questions, it is very important to note down the balance sheet date. No doubt in the closing balances of subsidiary company, especially of general reserve and profit or loss account. Now, the first thing is that here, where we, I need to discuss something. Here, loan from S Limited is written in the column of holding company. That means holding company might have taken some loan. And question is stating that including 12 lakhs, including interest. This loan amount is including interest. So now I will have to check towards the asset side. If you will look over here, here it is written 15% loan to H Limited was given by S Limited. This time subsidiary company has given loan of 15% to the holding company and loan was given to holding company on 1-6-2021 and amount is actually 11,20,000. If I have given you a loan of 11,20,000, logically in your books towards the liability side, 11,20,000 should be reflected. But subsidiary company has reflected the loan amount at 11,20,000, whereas holding company has represented the same thing as a liability, but to the extent of 12,60,000. Now, if I will take the difference of these two, that will be equal to 1,40,000. 12 lakh 60 and 11 lakh 20 thousand that difference means interest actually what happened no doubt about that holding company must have received a loan of 11 lakh 20 thousand only 11 lakh 20 thousand only but they are representing it towards the liability side at 12 lakh 60 thousand because in their opinion interest of 1 lakh 40 thousand must have now become accrued because we have taken the loan on 1st of uh, June. Now see here, if I am going to compute, because loan is given on 1-6-2021, and amount of loan is 11,20,000. And what, what is the rate of interest which is given? 15%. If I am going to compute 15% of 11,20,000 for 10 months, from 1st of June till the 31st of March, then this difference will be equal to 1,40,000. Because holding company had taken the loan, so holding company must have passed this entry, interest account debit to loan account, because interest is a loss to holding company because they are supposed to actually pay the interest. So it means that holding company has passed this particular entry. That is why their loan amount is not represented at 11,20,000, rather at 12,60,000. On the contrary, on the contrary, subsidiary company has still represented it at 11,20,000. It means subsidiary company hasn't yet passed the entry. So if subsidiary company will pass the entry, now what will happen? Because we have given the loan, correct? So now interest has become due at the end of the year. It's again to us. 
So loan amount which is, which is an asset for the subsidiary company, they are going to debit it and interest is a gain to them. So this interest will be credited and the amount will be 140,000. Now on account of this, what will happen? The profit and loss account of subsidiary company will increase by 140,000 because ultimately this interest will be transferred to profit and loss account. That means subsidiary company till up to this point hasn't passed this entry. We have derived at least this sort of information out of it. So you must understand now subsidiary company is going to pass these two entries. In fact, you can uh, cross out interest, interest, so the entry will be actually loan account debit to profit and loss account, you can say. On account of this entry, two things will happen. Now the loan amount of subsidiary company will also increase by 1,40,000, it will become 11,60,000 and profit and loss account of subsidiary company will also increase by 1,40,000. Is it clear to you? Number one, we are not supposed to pay, uh, prepare the consolidated balance sheet, but if we would have had, in that case, now this loan amount 11 lakhs, uh, 1120 plus 160 that is equal to 12 lakh 60,000, it will get cancelled out because it is intercompany transaction. So in the consolidated balance sheet, now this loan account will not appear. Is it clear to you? So this is the first point which needed a bit of discussion. And then after this, we have been given general items trade payables, then we have been given land and building, you have to take care of especially the land and building figure of S limited at the end of the year amount is 270 while plant and machinery 370 and furniture and fixture is 270,000. Lots of item have, uh, are there and this is this item equity share in S limited. It is reflected in the column of holding company. What does it mean? It means actually holding company has spent this much of amount by the end of this particular accounting year to acquire control or to acquire equity shares of S limited. This is nothing but investments. Then we have been given inventories 250, 70 trade receivables and then cash at bank and all this item. Now very first point require a bit of discussion in this case because on 01-2021 it is written on 01-2021 H Limited acquired 25,000. The very first information seems to me a printing mistake. That is the reason actually it is very difficult to get the same answer which the institute has provided. It would have been far better if institute would have come out with complete solution. I do not know and I am wondering actually when most of the other institute immediately come out with full fledged solutions. So again this date in my opinion should have been 1-4-2021. Correct? 1-4-2021. Anyway, on 1-4-2021 or 1-1-2021, no problem actually. It is not going to have, to be very honest, this particular uh, thing is not going to have any impact. Indirectly, it means when we reach the beginning of the current year, which is 1-4-2021, we had 25,000 share. We can say so. So, anyway, if this date would have been 1-4-2021, it would have been better. So on 1-4-2021 or 1-1-2021, we acquired 25,000 equity shares of S Limited when the credit balance or profit and loss account of S Limited is 1,87,000 and debt of general reserve on that date is 7,80,500. So when we acquired the control, sorry, when we acquired 25,000 shares, correct? And logically, as I'm telling you, this date should have been 1-4-2021. Anyway, so on that particular date, uh, we are having only 25,000 share, but at the same time, the balance of profit or loss account in general reserve is this much of subsidiary company. Now, another interesting twist is S Limited acquired some more shares in S Limited on 1-7-2021. But the question is how we are going to find out how many more shares we acquired. That is the biggest challenge. Correct, and it is very difficult to find that out. To be very honest with you, if someone is uh, not familiar with the all the intricacies of what we call AS21, correct. Anyway, we will talk about this particular facet. Okay, I will explain this particular point. Actually, when you will reach the end of this particular question, over there you will find that H Limited held 42,000 equity share in S Limited on 31st of 3, 2022. This is the hint actually which is provided to you. At the end of the year, H Limited is having 42,000 shares in subsidiary company at the end of the year. 
in between, in between, question has also stated, okay, let me go through the entire question, then only I will be able to explain the things. Now, further you have been given that on 31st of 3, 2021, S Limited declared and paid dividend at the rate of 20% on equity shares for the year 2020-21. On 31st of August 2021, those among you who have already subscribed to my courses or, or already gone through consolidation must know that uh, the, as far as dividend paid is concerned, we are least concerned with the date. We have to see the utilization, correct? The point here is that S Limited declared and paid dividend at the rate of 20% on equity share for the year 2020-21. Current year is 21-22. So it is clearly given that this dividend is for last year. And I have already told you so many times under consolidation that if dividend is meant for last year, automatically it means it's a pre-acquisition dividend. First of all, in order to solve this question, all the conceptualities you need to know, which we explained with respect to pre-acquisition dividend, post-acquisition dividend, abnormal losses, and even bonus issue. We have done all these things. So as far as pre-acquisition dividend is concerned, so many times I have already told you, as far as pre-acquisition dividend is concerned, first of all, we are going to subtract it from the opening balance of profit and loss account opening balance of profit and loss account. This is the first treatment with respect to pre-acquisition dividend. If dividend is pre-acquisition and dividend becomes pre-acquisition when it is given in the question that it is paid for the last year, either this information is available or if it is given in the question that dividend has been paid out of pre-acquisition profit or out of opening balance of PNL. It means dividend is pre-acquisition. So, first of all, we will compute the total dividend and subtract it from opening balance of PNL. And then, this is the first treatment. And second treatment is that this dividend now we will compute holding company share. Actually, what happens, and it is also given in the question normally, whatever dividend which we receive from the subsidiary company, we simply credit it to our profit and loss account. Actually, that's the wrong thing. That is the only problem. So, even in this particular case, whatever share of dividend holding company must have received from the subsidiary company, they must have credited it to their profit and loss account. Actually, they should have had credited it to the investment account. Instead of crediting it to profit and loss account, they should have credited it to investment account. Indirectly, it means S Limited has taken their share of what we call dividend to the credit or profit or loss account but they should have had taken it to the credit of investment account indirectly. It means they should have had subtracted it from investment account. Correct? Anyway, so now we have to do some rectification, it means. Because we have credited the amount to the profit or loss account, so now we will subtract holding company share, edge company share, let this sign show subtract. Subtract holding company share from consolidated profit and loss account. Consolidated PNL. When we prepare the consolidated balance sheet over there under equity item, we generally under other equity item generally we write consolidated PNL if you remember, wherein we write the balance of the parent company, then their share in the post acquisition profit and various other adjust adjustments. So I will subtract holding company share from the consolidated PNL. Why? Because this share of dividend should not have been credited to profit or loss account. So now I am rectifying because earlier I credited. So now I am what we call simply taking it away from the profit and loss account. And instead, now I will subtract it from investments. Because I should have had credited it to investment account, which I didn't. So now I will subtract it from investment instead of what we call from profit and loss account. Because earlier I credited it to profit and loss account. So I will subtract holding company share first from the consolidated PL and then holding company share will be subtracted from the investments. Correct. This will be the treatment of pre-acquisition dividend. Generally, there are two hints with respect to pre-acquisition dividend. So many times I have told you, if it is given in the question that dividend is for the last year, or if it is given in the question that dividend has been paid by utilizing the opening balance or by opening balance of profit and loss account. So if either of these two hints are given, it means dividend is post-acquisition dividend. However, if neither of these two hints are available in the question, then we have to go by the date in that. So we will see that in this particular question, there is case of post-acquisition dividend also. Post-acquisition dividend. 
we will see later on that in this question there is post acquisition dividend case also so as far as post acquisition dividend is concerned first of all we add it to during the year profit dyp means during the year profit whatever profit subsidiary company earned during the entire year first of all we are going to add it because we want to know how much in really they have actually on the profit so first of all we will add the what we call post acquisition dividend to during the year profit then after that what i am going to do I, after that i am going to subtract holding company share from consolidated pnl account why actually i will let you know that also and minority minority means non controlling interest holder under under actually as21 instead of calling them what we call minority interest we call them uh, instead of calling them non controlling interest holder we call them minority interest so minority interest share of minority interest will be subtracted from minority claim actually why we do that because post acquisition dividend has already been paid that mean these two come because subsidiary company has paid the dividend and in subsidiary company there are two major parties one is parent and another one is minority minority means non controlling interest holder so quite obviously whatever dividend subsidiary company must have paid that must have been received by parent company and non controlling interest holder or minorities so that mean because post acquisition dividend has already been paid and that must have been credited by these two parties to their respective what we call profit or loss account so now actually what i am doing is first i added the during the year first i added the post acquisition profit to the during the year profit so when i am adding it to during the year profit it means double credit double credit is being made to what we call parent and minority because they have already received their share of dividend whether it is pre or post equation so post equation dividend they have already received they must have credited it to their respective profit and loss account as i just said so when i am adding it to during the year profit because ultimately during the year profit will get segregated to what we call uh, pre acquisition post acquisition and ultimately move to these two parties only parent and minorities so because we added it what happens they get double credit so that is why their respective share will have to be subtracted from their respective profit and loss account so that is the reason actually first of all it will be added to during the year profit and then holding company share will be subtracted from consolidated pnl and minorities interest is it clear to you i told you in this question you should be well familiar with the treatment of pre and post acquisition dividend and also with respect to abnormal losses if you remember when we did and in fact we did lots of question with respect to abnormal losses so abnormal losses first First of all, will be added to during the year profit. During the year profit means accounting profit. Accounting profit simply means closing balance minus opening balance. Correct. First of all, we are going to add to during the year profit. Abnormal loss will be added to during the year profit. Then we will compute the pre and post acquisition period, and then abnormal loss will be subtracted. from that period in which it has taken place suppose abnormal loss has taken place in pre acquisition period then it will be subtracted from pre acquisition profit and if it has taken place in the post acquisition period then it will be subtracted from post acquisition profit so these are the treatment of abnormal loss abnormal loss a first of all you are going to add to during the year profit number 1 and b then you will subtract it from pre acquisition period or post acquisition period portion of profit depending upon the fact uh, depending upon the timing of abnormal loss if it has taken place in pre equation period it will be subtracted from pre if it has taken place in post equation period it will be subtracted from post equation period here in this particular question they have paid a dividend of 20% dividend was paid on 31st of 8 2021 now the share capital of subsidiary company which is given in this particular question is 10 lakh and this share sorry share of subsidiary company which is given in this question is 5 lakh this share capital is available on 31st of 3 2022 if suppose i am going to ask you what was the share capital of subsidiary company on 31st of august 2021 what will be your answer your answer should be that their share share capital must be 5 lakh only because share capital never changes every now and then are you getting my point or not it is not a revenue nature expense which will change every day so share capital unless and until stated shall remain same at every date right from beginning till the end so it means on 31st of august when we declared the dividend share capital of subsidiary company must be 5 lakh so pre acquisition dividend you will compute 
So pre-acquisition dividend, this is your pre-acquisition dividend. Pre-acquisition dividend will be equal to 5 lakh is your share capital. You will compute 20% of this amount and your 20% of this will be equal to 1 lakh. So 1 lakh worth of dividend, first of all, you are going to subtract from the opening balance of the PNL. Then you will compute holding company share. Holding company share later on we will see will be equal to 3 fifth in this case. Correct? That means 60,000. It will be subtracted from CPL, consolidated PNL and investment and from investment. When we will compute goodwill, we use the investment over there from the investment amount which is given to us. We will subtract holding company share. No treatment of minority is needed in case of pre-acquisition dividend. Now question further says that Really torturing question, no doubt about, especially for the students. On 1-10-2021, S Limited declared and paid an interim dividend at the rate of 20% on equity share out of current year's profit for the half year ended 30th of September 2021. One more mistake in my opinion, correct? I might be wrong in this case. Generally, in case of interim dividend, word per annum is never ever written. Generally, in case of dividend, correct? Per annum is never ever written, but because here it is written and further question has stated that this dividend has been paid out of current year's profit. So quite obviously, this time it is clear situation that this dividend is actually post acquisition dividend number one, number two, number two. Because your share capital is five lakh on 110-2021. S Limited declared and paid an interim dividend of 20%. So what will be the amount of dividend in this case? That is post acquisition dividend. Post acquisition dividend will be equal to 5 lakh share capital. And even though it is written 20% per annum, okay, I will write 20% per annum. But big dividend has been paid for half year. It is clearly written in the question. So I will take 6 by 12. Logically, that doesn't look nice. To do such things with respect to dividend because dividend generally is given at a flat rate on share capital that is why i think this this is something which is not genuinely true but anyway if it is given this way around i will try to attempt it this way around so post acquisition dividend will become your 20 percent of one lakh so indirectly it, you take it as 10 percent that is equal to fifty thousand is it clear to you? So your post acquisition dividend is 50,000. Post acquisition dividend, I told you, one added to during the year profit, then respective share of holding and minority company will be subtracted from their PL or their interest, whatever you may say. Now, another tricky line of this particular question is S Limited issued two shares for every five shares held. This is a case of bonus issue. As bonus shares, but no accounting effect has been given for bonus shares. Those among you who must have subscribed to our courses must have realized actually why we stressed upon the conceptualities. So many questions of bonus issues, so many questions of abnormal loss and so many questions of what we call dividend weighted so that you should not confront any problem. But at the same time, S Limited issued two shares for every five shares held as bonus share and clearly it is given in the question no accounting effect has been given for bonus share what does it mean first of all let me tell you in the in the on 30th of september 2021 30th of september 2021 question states that s limited actually has declared a bonus issue has declared a bonus issue now, bonus issue is if you are having five shares, you will get two bonus shares. That means after bonus, you will have seven shares. Suppose if you are a shareholder of subsidiary company and if you are having five shares, you will be given two shares as bonus shares. So quite obviously, after the bonus share, you will have seven shares. Correct? But point is that subsidiary company has issued two shares for every five share held but no accounting effect has been given for bonus shares. See, unless and until it is given in the question that accounting effect has been given. Unless and until it is stated very clearly, we always presume that whether it is written or not, we always presume that no accounting effect has been given still. Correct? So even if this particular line would not have been given over here, I still would have had presumed that no accounting effect has been given. 
What does it mean? It means actually if no accounting effect has been given, what does it mean? It means this share capital which is available here is before bonus issue. Correct? We, that means this share capital which is given here is before bonus issue. That is the point is. So no accounting effect has been given means the subsidiary company share capital which is given in the question is prior to bonus issue and we always presume this way round only. So next point is okay could you tell me what will be the amount of bonus issue for five shares subsidiary company is giving two shares and total worth of share capital of subsidiary company is five lakhs so what will be the worth of bonus issue quite obviously two lakhs five lakh divided by divide sorry five lakh into two divided by five so that will be equal to two lakh so subsidiary company must have given bonus issue worth rupees 2 lakh and if you want to know the number of share you simply divide it by 10 because face value of share is 10 that means 20,000 shares have been allotted as bonus issue is it clear to you now another important point in this question is with respect to all these items it's a hell of a information and very difficult for a student to comprehend not because of any tricky things because we have done so many questions of revaluations Every concept we have covered and covered at great length and breadth if you have subscribed to our courses. So, in this case, point number three, the land and building of S Limited, which stood at rupees 3 lakh on 1-4-2021 was considered as worth rupees 7 lakh 5,000. Now see the date on 1-6-2021. Why unnecessarily student fraternity is being tortured? simply because of the fact that time availability is very less and instead of giving this date as 1-7-2021 they have given it as 1-0-1-0-6-2021 I'm not telling that this date is incorrect it can be given in the question but that will unnecessarily increase the working by leaps and bounds to be very honest with you so anyway whatever which is given to us we will solve it in that manner but this is a not good thing. Land and building of S Limited, which stood at 3 lakh in the beginning, was considered as worth rupees 7 lakh 5000 on 1 6 2021. Remember one thing your date of acquisition is 1 7 2021. Generally, whatever revaluation questions we have done, and most of us actually do, over there it is always given uh, the book value in the beginning will be given, and of course, at what value it was estimated that will be given on the date of acquisition. However, in this particular question, that is not way. That is not. They did not follow this particular rule. Rather, actually, land and building which is stood in the books in the beginning at three lakh, it is given to you is considered as worth rupees seven lakh five thousand on zero one six two thousand twenty one. So we will have to do the, some revaluation. I, how we are going to do the revaluation that I will show you later on for which necessary adjustments are yet to be made so for which necessary obviously when we will do the revaluation necessary adjustment we will have to make as we know as far as revaluation is concerned if there is appreciation that appreciation is always taken as a sort of capital nature gain and second whenever there will be appreciation we have to give some additional depreciation However, so many times actually I stressed and halved upon the same string that additional depreciation is always computed for the post acquisition period. Correct? But problem here is that your revaluation is not done on the date of acquisition. It seems again a printing mistake, but again it is a possibility that intentionally they might have given it to you. So either or both the things could be possible. So revaluation took place on 1 6 2021. So here, first of all, I will have to do the revaluation on 0, 1, 6, 2021. Then I will be able to find out the appreciated value properly. Now I will have to provide depreciation on it for 10 months, not 9 months. Actually, my post acquisition period is 9 months because date of acquisition we will see later on will be 1, 7, 2021. So generally your post equation period in this case, uh, sorry, in general, your post equation period is nine months. But problem here is that you will have to compute the depreciation for next 10 months. Now on account of that, what will happen? 
out of 10 months depreciation, only 9 months additional depreciation will be taken to the post acquisition period and 1 month depreciation will be taken to the pre acquisition period. Because generally when we compute the additional depreciation, that is always related to the post acquisition period. But problem is that here I will have to compute the depreciation from this date onward. Now this date onward means for next 10 months. Problem is that out of next 10 months, only 9 months fall in post acquisition period. That is why I told you it will unnecessarily increase the working. Similarly, you have been given besides land and building, similar information is with respect to furniture and fixtures of S Limited which stood in the books in the beginning at 3 lakh but considered at 1 lakh 5000 on 1 6 2001 for which necessary adjustment need to be made how we are going to compute the depreciation that i will let you know in a short while but in this question this is how this particular information is given i will simply give you a quick idea how you are going to give compute the depreciation in this particular question for example land and building uh, Okay, I stretch a line, correct? This is the beginning of the accounting year 1-4-2021. And let us say this is the end of the accounting period 31st of 3-2022. In the beginning land and building stood at rupees 3 lakh. In the beginning land and building stood at 3 lakh. So many times I have already told you, whenever you do the revaluation, your first target is to compute the what we call depreciation rate. In order to compute the depreciation rate, what you are going to do? You are going to take the closing book value of land and building. That is the reason why I told you earlier when I was going through the question to have a good look over these items. So 2,70,000 is the closing value of land and building. Now you tell me if opening balance is 3 lakh and closing value is 2,70,000. So how much depreciation subsidiary company must have charged in the current year? So quite obviously depreciation charged by subsidiary company means 30,000, 3 lakh minus 2 lakh 70,000. And if I am going to ask you what will be the percentage of depreciation, 30,000 30, divided by 3 lakh into 100, that will be equal to 10%. So rate of depreciation on land and building will be equal to 10%. At least you have been able to find out this way around. Now try to understand, in the beginning the value is 3 lakh. Actually, the revaluation is done. It should have been done on 1-7-2021, honestly speaking. So that is why I'm not very satisfied with the dates and all these things. But anyway, if date is given to us as 1-6-2021, we will go by date. 1-6-2021. So on this date, revaluation is done. So because revaluation is done on this particular date, I need to find out the estimated value which is always given in the question and which will always be given in the question. It is clearly given that your land and building is estimated at 7,5,000. So you are going to write here 7,5,000. This is your estimated value. This is EV estimated value or revalued value. Now you have to compare it with the book value on this date. Now book value which you had is 3 lakh but this book value is on 1-4-2021. You have to find out the book value of this item on this particular date. So for that you will have to apply the depreciation for 2 months on this particular item it means. So that means if I am going to apply depreciation rate on 3 lakh at the rate of 10% that is 2 by 12. 2 by 12. For 2 months depreciation I will need to find out isn't it or not. That will be equal to how much? 30,000 divided by 6 is equal to 5,000, I think. So, 2,95,000 will become. So, 5,000 will be depreciation for the next two months. Correct? For the next two months, the depreciation will be 5,000. If I am not wrong, 30,000 divided by 6 is equal to 5,000. Okay. So, 5,000 will be depreciation. So, book value must be 2,95,000 on the date of revaluation. Re we may so. Isn't it or not? So we may say so. So now we can take the difference of these two items to know the appreciation. This is how you will have to find out. That is the point is 7,5,000 minus 2,95,000. So that will give you 4,10,000. So 4,10,000, 4,10,000, this is your revaluation of land and building. This is appreciated value. Is it clear to you? Now, I just told you, if there is appreciation, generally we have to find out additional depreciation. 
Now I will have to find out additional depreciation. How I will find additional depreciation? Generally, additional depreciation is always found for the post-acquisition period because generally the revaluation is done only on post-acquisition period. Oh, sorry, on date of acquisition. So from date of acquisition period, whatever period we have, that will be post-acquisition period. But here the problem is this, that we have to find out depreciation now from 16 uh, onwards. So that is why, uh, in my opinion, th there seems some flaw as far as framing of this particular question is concerned. So anyway, I have to find out now depreciation for the next 10 months. I told you in order to find out the de additional depreciation, first you take the revalued value. 7,5,000. Compute depreciation at the rate of 10% for 10 months. For 10 months, the depreciation will be equal to this much. Is it clear to you? That is 7,5,000. 7,5,000 into 10%, that is, and into 10 by 12, that is equal to 58,750. Logically, on this particular item, depreciation for the, in the next six months should have been this much. However, now you compute the depreciation on this particular item on old value. Your old value is 3 lakh. At the rate of 10% for 10 months, you must have already given this much of depreciation. Total depreciation logically given now to be given on this particular asset should be this much. But we have already given some depreciations because earlier our book value was 3 lakh. So 3 lakh into 10% for 10 months. How much, how much it will be? 30,000 into 10 divided by 12. That is 25,000. That means out of 50, 8,750, 25,000 worth of depreciation has already been charged. So what is the additional depreciation? This is your additional depreciation. You will take the difference of these two, 58,750. Now again here the big problem is that generally the rule is that whatever additional depreciation is there, that is always credited or always taken to the post acquisition period. That means when we prepare the analysis table, Correct? Above generally we, uh, below sorry, generally we write the changes in post acquisition other equity wherein, wherein we write post acquisition profit etc. or post acquisition general reserve. And so now you will have to refrain yourself from taking it straight away or treating it straight away as a post acquisition loss because generally additional depreciation is treated as a post acquisition loss. But now here you are, you are not going to commit this mistake because only nine months. So you will have to break it into nine months and one month. One month will be taken towards, will be considered as pre-acquisition loss and nine months will be considered as post-acquisition loss. That is why the working unnecessarily got increased. Are you getting my point or not? This is how you are going to solve it. That means 33,750, I will have to break it uh, divided by 12. In fact, uh, out of, uh, this is for 10 months, no? So, 1 by 9 I will compute. This depreciation is for 10 months. So, what will be for 9 months? 33,750 divided by 10, of course, will be equal to 3,375. So, 3,375, you will write in the upper part of the table, what I mean by that, I will just let you know, but you will consider it as pre equation loss and into 9, it will be considered as 30,375. You will consider as post acquisition loss. Is it clear to you or not? Post acquisition loss, you are going to consider it. So that is why I told you they unnecessarily increase the working so much. And not only one, there is another item, furniture and fixture. Similarly, you will have to do the working for furniture and fixture. Now, furniture and fixture of S Limited, which stood at 3 lakh in the beginning, was considered at 1 lakh 5,000 on 1 6 2021. Once again, this date is pretty difficult to understand actually why it is given in this manner. But still, I will do it for you, although I am unwilling to be very honest with you. But anyway, 
first you stress the line 1 for 2021 then you coolly write the closing date 31st of 3 2022 correct this is how you have to do the working working means i have to do it here in this space is the constraining factor otherwise those who know me know that how neatly i do the work but here i have to make you understand now first of all write the book value the book value is actually three lakhs the first target should be to compute the depreciation look into the balance sheet you will find that closing value is two lakh seventy thousand fortunately so if closing value is 270, that means the rate of depreciation must be equal to 10%. Difference 30,000, 30,000 divided by 3 lakh into 100, rate of depreciation will be 10%, correct? Now the revaluation date is 1-6-2021. This is your revaluation date. Now on this revaluation date, estimated value is given to you this time. Estimated value which is given to you is 1,5,000. Estimated value is 1,5,000. So you are going to write here 1,5,000. Now you have to subtract the book value on this date. So you charge two months depreciation. So depreciation for two months will be equal to 5,000 because rate of depreciation is 10%. So two months depreciation you have found out. 33 lakh into 10% into 2 by 12. That will be equal to 5,000. That means the book value is 2,95,000 of furniture on the revaluation date. So this time, estimated value is less than the book value. So 105 less 2,95,000. Now that is equal to 1,90,000. So 1,90,000. Now this 1,90,000. See, I called here appreciated value. I will call it devaluation. There could be up valuation. It was up valuation 4,10,000. Now there is devaluation. 1,90,000 devaluation. Whenever devaluation takes place, you get benefited in the sense that some reduction in depreciation will take place. Earlier there was up valuations, you, so you have to, you had to compute additional depreciation. Now you will compute reduction in depreciation. In order to compute reduction in depreciation, same thing you will apply. Correct? First, you will take the revalued figure which is 1,5,000. Compute depreciation rate at 10% for the period onwards date of revaluation, that is 10 months. Which in this case will be equal to 105000 into 10% and into 10 divided by 12, that is 8750. That means on this item logically depreciation should be provided. 8750 in the next 10 months but we have already provided some depreciation on this because earlier the value the book value now you consider the book value 3 lakh into 10 percent you must have already provided this much of depreciation that is 25,000 so because this time you have provided extra depreciation so you will have to reduce the depreciation. Reduction in depreciation is considered as a gain to you. So less 25,000, that is equal to 16,250. Now this 16,250 should not be considered as a post acquisition gain, as, as a post acquisition gain as we normally do. Because this is for next 10 months and out of next 10 months, 9 months are post acquisition and 1 month is pre acquisition. So, I will write 1625, this is pre-acquisition gain and 1625 into 9 will be equal to 146, 14625. This will be considered as post-acquisition gain, this will be considered as pre-acquisition gain, correct? So, this is how you are going to do the revaluation in this particular item. Now, 
we have almost finished everything. The second paragraph was really very, very, uh, not I should say tough for us, but at the same time for a student fraternity, definitely it's pretty tough, no doubt about it. Second important point which is given over here, H Limited and S Limited agree that with effect from 1st July 2021, for services rendered, H Limited should charge 10,000 per month, but no effect has been given. That means, obviously, parent company provides some services to the subsidiary company, correct? It could be in any form. So for that, generally, the holding company charges some amount from the subsidiary company and it was agreed that on 1st of July 2021, 20, we would charge 10,000 per month from you, but no accounting effect has been given. It means, now what will happen? See here. 10,000 per month into 9 because this agreement took place on 1st of July 2021. So 90,000 rupees, first of all, subsidiary company will have to subtract. 90,000 will be subtracted from subsidiaries company's profit and loss account because no effect has yet been given to it. Correct? Because this amount subsidiary company had to pay to holding company now and holding company will add it to their consolidated PL. Subsidiary company's profit and loss account will get reduced by 90,000. In fact, how will you reduce when you will compute when we do the adjustment in the during the year profits? Over there, I am going to actually subtract 90,000. And in the consolidated PL of holding company, I am going to add 90,000 because holding company is going to receive some amount. Further in this question, as if it is not enough, during 2021, now 2021 is a date falling in the pre-acquisition period. Goods costing 23,500 were destroyed against which insurance company paid 2,000 only. So now there is a case of abnormal loss. So in this case, there is a case of abnormal loss. I told you, first of all, you compute the net amount that is 23,500 minus 2,000, 21,500. I told you abnormal loss, first of all, will be added to during the year profit. After adding to during the year profit, ultimately during the year profit will get segregated into two parts or two portions, pre-acquisition portion and post-acquisition portion. Now you subtract 21,500 from pre-acquisition portion because this particular loss took place in the month of June, correct? So this is how you are going to take care of this item. And now S Limited owed H Limited 3 lakh for purchase of stock from H Limited on which it made a profit of 20% on cost. What does this particular line suggest? S limited owed, that means in this particular case, in this particular case, it is H limited who must have sold some goods to subsidiary company because it is given S limited owed, that means S limited is supposed to pay 3 lakh. And they must have purchased a stock from H Limited. So H Limited must have sold some stock to S Limited on credit. If I would be preparing the consolidated profit and loss account, I would have subtracted 3 lakh from debtors and creditors because 3 lakh will be considered as intercompany transaction number one. Because we sold these items on credit, S Limited owed 3 lakh to H Limited for purchase of stock from H Limited. Now, just to confuse you, it is given that whatever stock was purchased by S Limited from H Limited, out of that, they sold uh, H Limited and further actually it is given that when these goods were sold by H Limited to S Limited, H Limited made a profit of 20% on cost. Now, 20% on cost means 20 by 120 on selling price because ultimately I would need that rate to find out the unrealized profit. So rate of profit on cost will have to be converted into rate, rate of profit on selling price. Now in order to confuse you, S Limited sold some of these goods for 288000 and made a profit of 20% on cost till 31st of 3, 2022. H Limited sold 3 lakh worth of goods to S Limited. And S Limited sold out of this 2,88,000 worth of goods at some profit. Now, this is a relevant line. We are not concerned with that. What you did with the purchases. Important thing, which I, what I am concerned of with is, 
how much how many worth of goods are still remaining with that subsidiary company so i sold you 3 lakh worth of goods and out of 3 lakh worth of goods you sold out 2 lakh 88000 worth of goods that means the remaining goods is equal to 12000 so remaining goods is equal to 12000 so unrealized profit will be 12000 into 20 by 120 as i just said so that will be equal to 2000 because it is a case of downstream transaction in case of downstream transaction this unrealized profit this is your unrealized profit it will be subtracted from inventories no doubt and it will be subtracted from holding companies consolidated profit and loss account holding company share 2000 will be subtracted from consolidated PL. that's all because this is a case of downstream transaction correct one you are going to subtract from inventory and entire 2000 will be subtracted from holding company holding company's interest that is consolidated profit and loss account and as if it still it is not enough correct another information is given on 1 1 on 1 1 2022 s limited sold to h limited a machine for rupees 2 lakh 40 thousand at a loss of 25 percent on cost now again this particular line is given to us now in this particular line what is given to us that s limited is selling s limited is the seller and s limited is selling in fact s limited sold a machine and sold a machine for rupees two lakh forty thousand they sold this machine to h limited for rupees two lakh forty thousand it is given to us for rupees two lakh forty thousand S Limited sold a machine to H Limited for 2,40,000 at a loss of 25% on cost. Now, what is this 2,40,000? Question is telling H Limited, sorry, S Limited sold a machine to H Limited for rupees 2,40,000 and concurrently it is also letting us know that at a loss of 25% on cost. First of all, this is your selling price. We sold it for 2,40,000. Correct? We sold this machine to you for rupees two lakh forty thousand at a loss of twenty five percent on cost. Now you let me know if cost is hundred, if cost price is hundred, what will be the margin? Now in this particular question, because instead of earning profit we earn loss so instead of adding add i will write margin will be 25 now this margin here stands for loss so that means my selling price must be equal to 75 are you getting my point or not that mean try to understand if my selling price is 75 that mean my cost was 100 Cost was 100. S Limited sold to H Limited a machine for rupees 2 lakh 40 thousand. We sold it to you for rupees 2 lakh 40 thousand. So if selling price is 75, your cost is 100. If your selling price is 2 lakh 40, what is your cost? That is 2 lakh 40 thousand into 100 divided by 75. Is it clear to you or not? So, that means that is equal to 3. I will have to compute it. Two lakh forty thousand into 100 divided by 75. That is equal to 3 lakh 20,000. Or instead of moving to such a long route, I could have straight away taken rate of margin on selling price 25 by 75, that is 1 by 3. I could have simply what we call taken 1 by 3 of this item 80,000. So 80,000 must be my loss. I sold it for, I sold it to you for rupees 240,000. And I'm telling you that I incurred a loss of rupees 80,000. That means cost must be equal to 320,000. If I am I if I will sell it to you at two lakh forty, then only I will say that I incurred a loss of what we call uh, uh, 
how much was the rate given? 25% on cost. Because if I am going to compute 25% of 320, it will be equal to 80,000. Correct? So at least through this particular transaction, you are able to find out what is the amount of loss and what is the amount and what is the cost price. Now see. So in this case, instead of unrealized profit, because that machinery is still with us, no doubt about that. The point is that in case of inventory, when unrealized profit or loss takes place, correct? Similarly, here, unrealized loss has taken place. This unrealized loss, and it is a down, it is an upstream transaction because S Limited is selling the goods to H Limited. So, this is a case of upstream transaction. And instead of unrealized profit, we are having unrealized loss. Unrealized loss. Unrealized loss is equal to 80,000. First of all, what we are going to do this. The first treatment of this 80,000 is that I will have to add it to machinery in the consolidated PL. When I am going to prepare the consolidated balance sheet, consolidated balance sheet, I, I will simply add 80,000 to the machinery. Second, now entire 80,000 will be added to machinery in the consolidated balance sheet and then out of this 80,000, I will compute the share of parent that is holding company and minorities that is non-controlling interest. Whatever their shares are, because normally what happens, unrealized profits are subtracted because it is a case of unrealized loss. So I will add holding company share to the consolidated PL. And similarly, I will add minority share to minority claim. Is it clear to you or not? This is how you are going to do the treatment. But problem is that still it is not enough. That is why I am telling you this is all very, very injustice. Uh, almost injustice. It is better actually they gave a choice and I am very sure none of the student fraternity would have had attempted this question. Otherwise entire three hours would have been spent on this and still no surety of matching the answer. Further in this question it is given depreciation at 10% per annum was provided by H Limited on this particular machine. Now you have to understand this particular point also because it is given in the question. We have to explain it. Now, H Limited acquired this machine from you on which date I have to take that also. S Limited, any particular date is given? Yeah, yes, it is given on 1 1 2022, fortunately. So H Limited got this machinery from you on 1 1 2020. And now we know that cost of this machinery actually is 3,20,000. But H Limited purchased it from you at what cost? Because we purchased it from you at only 2,40,000. That is why subsidiary company incurred a loss. But problem is that I, I am the holding company now. I purchased an item from you for Rs. 2,40,000. Quite obviously, I will be under the impression that this item has a cost of 2,40,000. Isn't it or not? Quite obviously, I will be under an impression that this item has a cost of 2,40,000. And accordingly, because now accounting year will fall on 31st of 3, 2000, sorry, on 1, 1, 2021, an accounting year will close on 31st of 3, 2022. So on the reporting date or by the time I will reach the reporting date, three months would have expired. So quite obviously, H Limited must have given a depreciation at the rate of 10% on 2,40,000. So 2,40,000 into 10% into 3 by 12, this much of depreciation we must have given, how much it will be equal to? 24,000 divided by 4, that is equal to 6,000. So quite obviously, because I am under an impression that cost of this machinery is actually 2,40,000, so I would be providing depreciation on this item at 6,000 for 3 months. But now, when we will do the consolidation, I will come to know, actually, the cost of this item is 3,20,000. Now, I will come to know. 
So accordingly, now I will have to recalculate my depreciation. P lag, I do not know while solving this particular question. Those who solved it actually they have done this or not, but logically this should be done. P lag 20,000 into 10% into 3 by 12. So that is how much? 8,000, 32,000 divided by 4. 8,000. That means by the end of the current year, holding company must have provided depreciation 6,000, but holding company should have had provided 8,000 worth of depreciation. So on account of this, 2,000 additional depreciation holding company will have to provide. So this 2,000 you are going to subtract from the consolidated P&L when you are going to prepare consolidated P&L of holding company. In fact, there is no point in telling of holding company. So whenever we write consolidated P&L, first of all, we write holding company's balance as per balance sheet. We add to it actually the share of holding company in the post acquisition profit. Then we do several adjustments. For example, we will subtract the holding company share of dividend pre acquisition and post acquisition dividend both. Similarly, unrealized profit of inventory 2000 we will subtract. Similarly, there is unrealized loss we will add or we will add it and now we will also subtract this item 2000 additional depreciation. Lots of things are given. Now, the foremost thing of this particular item the foremost thing which I was talking about is this. H Limited held 42,000 equity share on 31st of 3, 2022. Now, we have gone through the entire length and breadth of this particular question. Now, at least we know what is the situation of this particular traded question. Correct? 1-4-2021 is your starting date and 31st of 3, 2022 is your ending date. We have been given that on this particular date we had or we acquired 25,000 share, whatever you may like to say because we are not very sure what sort of date it should be. Actually, date should have been 1-4-2021, but it's still this particular date is not going to play any havoc. Don't worry about that. So, H Limited acquired 25,000 shares. It is given to you. So, we presume that on 1-4-2021, we acquired 25,000 shares. But the main thing is yes, main thing is that question is telling that on 1-7-2021, some additional shares have been acquired by us. Now, the big question mark is actually how to find out how many more shares we acquired. That is the only thing which we need to find out. So, how can we find out? Just pay attention here. Where is the last line? H Limited held 42,000 equity shares in S Limited on 31st of 3, 2022. It is given to you. Now, what I am going to do is, see here. If suppose before bonus issue, suppose before bonus issue, I am having five shares. How many shares I will have after the bonus issue? Seven shares, quite obviously. At the end of the year, if I am saying that I am having 42,000 shares, quite obviously in this 42,000 shares, some bonus shares must be there. No doubt about that. Correct? So, 42,000. So, this is after bonus issue. After bonus issue. Before bonus issue. So, 42,000 into 5, you multiply 42,000 into 5 and divide it by 7 how much you are getting that is equal to i think 30000 right so that mean before bonus issue you were having 30000 shares before bonus issue that mean at the end of the year at least we can reach this conclusion that before bonus issue we are having 30000 share at least i hope you got this particular point if you got this particular point then major point is solved that means at the end of the year, I may say that before bonus issue, I am having 30,000 shares. And on this date, I am having 25,000 shares. 
So how could I have 30,000 shares on 31st of 3, 2022, 30,000 shares before bonus issue I'm talking about. So it means on this date, I must have acquired 5,000 more shares, 5,000 more shares. 25 plus 5,000 will give me 30,000 shares. So on this date, prior to bonus issue, I am having 30,000 shares and I must have received 12,000 worth of bonus shares. So that is why 42,000 number of shares I am having. And you can find out also that you will receive only 12,000 shares. It is quite obvious the subsidiary company has given, has done a bonus issue of 2 lakh I told you earlier. One share is of 10. That means subsidiary company must have made a bonus issue of 20,000. Out of that 20,000, you will receive 12,000 because your interest will be three fifth. I will tell you, and my minority will receive 8,000. Is it clear to you or not? So now, at least you know that in the beginning, you are having 25,000 shares, and now you are having 5,000 shares. On this date, actually, total number of share of subsidiary company is 50,000. On this date, you can, it cannot be said that you are exercising the control because you were having just 50% of the share. Now, on this date, you will acquire the control and number of share with you is 30,000 out of 50,000 shares. Out of 50,000, you are having 30,000 shares and 20,000 shares shall be held by minorities. So, quite obviously, the controlling ratio will be 3 is to 2 in this particular question. So controlling ratio is 3 is to 2, at least you have been able to understand that. Now how you are going to solve this question? Correct, I have given you sufficient amount of hints now, at least you should be in a position to solve this particular question. First of all, first of all what you do, please just have a look over here. And if you are not able to solve, no problem at all. Because there are many printing, if you are not going to get exact answer, no problem. I already told you so many printing mistakes are there. So you need not require to worry about it. I will share the sheet on my telegram channel and that I will share the sheet of the solution of this particular question. You can download it from the telegram channel, which will be telegram channel link is given under description. You can get it from there, but day after tomorrow, not tomorrow, day after tomorrow, you will be able to get the solution sheets from there. Correct? Of this particular question. So how you are going to solve this particular question? First of all, what you did, what you do is stretch a line, write 1 for 2021, opening date 10, 1, 31st of 3, 2022, demarcate the period pre into pre and post acquisition period. Then under second step, compute the degree of control. I have already told you, now you can find out the degree of control easily, correct? First of all, in order to find out the degree of control, you need to tell to the examiner that you are well aware of this particular fact that how will you compute that. So you write at the end of the year, we are having 42,000 shares. So quite obviously, it means after the bonus issue. First, compute the number of shares prior to bonus issue, which you can do so. So you will come to know that on this particular date, prior to bonus issue, you are having 30,000 shares. So now compare it with 25,000, you will come to know how many more shares you acquired on this particular date. So now, Degree of control, you write 30,000, 20,000. After having written degree of control, then you simply write your profit and loss account. Closing balance is 80,500, write 80,500. And then write this in this manner. You write 80,500 closing balance and opening balance is given to you. Whatever opening balance is given, you write that balance. It is given in the question. Then from that, subtract the pre-acquisition dividend. As I told you, pre-acquisition dividend will be subtracted from opening balance. After subtracting the pre-acquisition dividend from the opening balance, whatever net amount you get, now you compare that net amount with this particular figure. Now, difference will give you, this difference will give you during the year profit or simply accounting period profit or current year profit, whatever you may like to call it. And there are so many adjustments which you need to do. One year adjustment was with respect to abnormal loss. First of all, you add abnormal loss net amount 21,500, whatever it is. You add it first. Then in this particular question, there is a case of post acquisition dividend also. I told you post acquisition dividend is added to the during the year profit. So whatever post acquisition dividend, I think that was 50,000, you add it over here. 
then in this particular question you have to understand one another important aspect there was with respect to with respect to i told you 15 percent loan correct because this entity hasn't yet passed the entry so now see you can add this interest to the closing balance or to during the year profit one and same thing it will be so interest which we are supposed to which we mean subsidiary company is supposed to receive in fact it is the fault of the subsidiary company it hasn't yet passed the entry for the same so now it will pass the entry its profit will increase by the interest amount of one lakh forty thousand is it clear to you or not all there are so many adjustment in this question then uh, pre equation post equation dividend then ten thousand worth of expenses which holding company uh, is supposed to charge from the subsidiary company so on account of that subsidiaries profit will decrease and of course the profit of holding company will increase all these adjustment you will have to do here correct you will have to add the abnormal losses post equation dividend interest and let me check it out whether there is any more general reserve then dividend we have done um, and 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 in my opinion there is no further information which you need to do it correct after adding this profit to all these adjustment after addition and deduction whatever amount you get you subtract that into pre and post period pre and post period three months pre post period nine months correct and from the pre portion you you will have to subtract the abnormal loss amount is it clear to you this will be considered your pre acquisition profit is it clear to you or not now once you are done up with this the next step as we normally do is next step as we normally do is is we prepare a table correct in fact before after this you you will have to do the analysis of general reserve also because we have done only profit and loss account similarly you will do some analysis with respect to general reserve you will have to take the closing balance the closing balance is eight lakh forty thousand five hundred and opening balance is given to you whatever opening balance is given to you in the question correct opening balance is given to you in the question i think it is uh general reserve balance is seven lakh eighty thousand five hundred so you write seven lakh eighty thousand five hundred you take the difference of these two items that will be known as during the year amount or during the year general reserve that means this much of amount you must have transferred to general reserve during the year correct now divide that general reserve into pre-acquisition and post-acquisition that's all simple you can do that <coughs> now you will have to prepare the table that preparation of table is very very important how to prepare that particular table i have done it so many times when i was doing the consolidation recently correct so in order to prepare that table i'm looking out for a space anyway you will have to prepare that table in the table first of all you write one column for holding company another column for minorities share of holding company is three-fifth of minority is equal to two-fifth this is the amount and under it first of all you will have to write the share capital of subsidiary company whatever share capital of subsidiary company actually see here what i am writing on the date of acquisition i am trying to find out what were the net assets of subsidiary company on this date, on date of acquisition, which is 1-7-2021. So share capital, which is appearing in balance sheet at the end of the year, must be the same on the date of acquisition. You simply write 5 lakh worth of share capital. Don't forget to write bonus issue. Because the effect is not given yet. So now you will given the effect. So when subsidiary company will make a bonus issue, the share capital will move up to 7 lakh and you simply write bonus issue. After that, on the date of acquisition, you write profit and loss account. Now what is the balance in profit and loss account on the date of acquisition? First of all, write here opening balance. Whatever opening net balance is there, which I told you, opening balance less dividend. Whatever net balance is there, 
Now add to it the pre-acquisition profit and loss account. Opening balance is this much and in the first three months you must have earned this much. So it will tell you the profit and loss account balance on the date of acquisition. Similarly, you will have to do with respect to general reserve. You will have to write the opening balance. Whatever opening balance of general reserve is there. Correct. Then you write pre-acquisition general reserve. Pre-acquisition general reserve. But before you put this thing in the outer column, you have to exercise caution that whenever bonus issue case is there, you have to subtract the bonus issue from general reserve also and especially from pre-acquisition general reserve. Correct? Because whenever a subsidiary company will make a bonus issue, its reserve will fall and its share capital will increase. So we will have to subtract the bonus issue amount also. Now whatever figure you get, you will have to write over here. On the date of acquisition, then this is item number one, this is two, this is three, this is four. And also you write item number five because I am not having space. Item number five, revaluation. Whatever revaluation, up valuation took place, you will have to write in the outer column. Devaluation in respect of furniture, you will write it in this manner. Is it clear to you? And here, here, depreciation additional depreciation for one month which i was trying to tell you additional depreciation is generally represented as a post acquisition item but because in this question unfortunately one month item is pre acquisition so depreciation additional in case of land and building for one month depreciation you will have to write here correct additional depreciation is always a loss similarly for furniture there is a reduction in depreciation for one month, for one month, and you will write it as a positive item. So these items, after addition and all, then you will find, you will be able to know what is your total amount of net assets on the date of acquisition. Now you segregate that item between holding company and minorities in the ratio of three fifth and two fifth. So now I will come to know what is the share of holding company in the net assets on the date of acquisition and what is the share of minority in the net assets on the what we call date of control. Once I know this, then I will compute, then I will compute the cost of control. In order to know, in order to compute cost of control, first of all, we take the net assets which we, which we have already computed here this is net assets you will write the amount of net assets out of this net asset write minority share whatever minority share you simply write here so you will be left up with holding company share of net assets now compare holding company share of net assets with the amount which holding company has paid now holding company has paid 460000 as investment this is the investment amount don't forget to separate pre-acquisition dividend. Now, pre-acquisition dividend was 60,000. Pre-acquisition dividend is equal to 60,000 or how much? Let me see. Total share capital is, this was the question. Well, the question is, share capital is 5 lakh and below it is given paid a dividend of 20% on 1 lakh, right? So 1 lakh was the total amount of dividend and holding company share is 60,000. You will have to subtract it, correct? That is how you are going to find out. So this is the amount of investment. You will subtract holding company share of dividend, pre-acquisition dividend. I told you pre-acquisition dividend once it will be subtracted from the opening balance, then holding company share will be subtracted from investment and also will be subtracted from consolidated PL. So, whatever investment, this net investment and share of holding company in the net assets, take the difference. That difference will give you capital reserve or goodwill. Is it clear to you? Similarly, now you can find out minority interest. Now, in order to find out minority interest, you have already found out share of minority in the net assets, correct? So, you will write share of minority in the net assets. 
in net assets. Then share in post acquisition profit. Whatever post acquisition profit you have computed, take the share of minority. Share in post acquisition general reserve. Correct. Then in this particular case, post acquisition dividend. Share in post acquisition dividend. You will have to subtract post acquisition dividend. Whatever share, post equation dividend, I think is 50,000. Their share is two fifths, so 20,000. You are going to subtract it from the minority interest. Is it clear to you or not? And in this question, there was unrealized profit with respect to inventory, but that, that, that was related to downstream transactions. So nothing will have any effect, but you will have to add unrealized loss, unrealized loss on sale of machinery. Now on sale of machinery, there is a loss of 80,000. So two-fifth, you will have to add it because it's a case of loss. If it would have been profit, you would have subtracted it. So this is how you are going to find out minority interest. Is it clear to you or not? This is how, this is all about this particular question. It's a pretty, pretty long, very arduous question, very difficult for the student fraternity to do it within the time constraining factor. So... I have, as far as possible, I could solve it. I have already solved and given you the best possible explanations. I hope it would give, deliver you some sort of confidence, at least if next time you come across such informations. So, that is the only benefit which we derive out of the analysis of this series. As far as this series is concerned, only one more session I will take, wherein I am going to do uh, one question, cash flow question, and one question question of section C of December 2021. Correct? And after that, please, none of you make any messes. That doesn't look nice. Actually, whatsoever is possible from our side, we have given it to you. You must understand I have got several tasks to take care of, right from writing books to, to the catering of the various needs of the several students. If you happen to be pretty renowned faculty, then you have a problem in the sense that you have last number of students, you have to cater to them. So that's the uh, point. So let's uh, meet you in the next session and I will give you a full-fledged solution of this question. Don't worry about that. First, the main task is to acquaint you with everything. In fact, at least through this particular session, not only we have done this solution to this, but we have recapped all the things which we did under consolidation. Correct? So shall meet you in the next session. On that count, we take leave of you.